Inside we have the TFT LCD LED projector screen. It's a 480 resolution, it's 480p or 800 by 480 RGB with a color reproduction of 16.7 million. It does have a manual keystone, not automatic, so the manual keystone will give you the adjustment ratio of 15 degrees either direction. If you want to set it on a table in front of you in order to cast it onto a wall, that works pretty well so that you can just adjust it within that 15 degrees. Anything else, you might want to throw a book under it or adjust the one foot adjustment that they give you. The lifespan of the bulb claims 30,000 hours. I would speculate that that's probably not true and just some marketing gimmicky stuff right there because I'd imagine that for the price of a new 30,000 hour bulb, you just buy a new projector like this one if you liked it enough, that is. The speakers on it are a single 2 watt 8 ohm speaker and it's actually pretty impressive. It had a pretty decent loud sound to it. One downside to it is the IR sensor is in the back of the projector and this can make it somewhat difficult to sort of find where you want to point your remote. If it doesn't mean putting a mirror in two different places so that it can very easily hit, it's sort of hit or miss if it's actually going to detect when you use it. The cast uh, sizes recommended by the projector are 50 to 130 inches. We had a 6 foot screen on the wall that looked pretty good. The aspect ratios are 4.3 and 16 by 9 respectively. You can pick that and set it or you can just set it on auto so you can auto detect what to put it in. The lens is an f125 lens giving you a decent range of focus which means you can set it pretty much in a wide range of where you want to place it in order to focus it. Now if you go too far you'll get too focused, you'll get blur edges. If you go too close it won't be able to focus at all. Kind of finding that sweet spot is what matters. So we can see we have a pretty decent image. It doesn't look terribly bad at all. Actually nice good six foot screen on the wall, nothing too terrible. So the image is bright, way brighter than any of the other mini projectors that I've tried. It's rated at 100 ANSI lumens. It's a little bit oversaturated, but considering what you're doing with this thing, like you're not watching these like super color accurate images, this thing has a nice color profile. It has vertical keystone correction, so you can have it tilted or even use it on your bed. You can get up to 100 inches, that's what they say, but you gotta be in a really dark room to project it like that. This thing has Netflix, YouTube, Plex, a whole bunch of media services available right on the device. So you don't need to connect anything. There's a remote. It's like kind of your standard remote. And there's also an app that you can use on your phone to control the device. And it's surprisingly good. There's no hiccups, it's not janky. And there is mouse control. It's actually a pretty good app. So this thing has your standard HDMI connection. And it also has a dongle with a USB connection so you can connect up a USB flash driver. With. It's a five watt speaker, not huge, not amazing. The fan noise is actually pretty average to me. I wouldn't consider it louder or quieter than most of the mini projectors that I've used, but because of the bigger and better speakers, I feel like it kind of compensates for fan noise.
ZTE S Pro 2. The S Pro 2 is ZTE's second foray into the portable projector space, and they've made a lot of improvements over last year's S Pro, aka the Live Pro on Sprint. The design is basically just a large square with rounded corners and flat sides all around, and it measures in at about one inch in thickness. It's shaped sort of like an Amazon Fire TV, but it's much bigger due to the display on top and obviously the projector that's housed on the front. It's mostly made of metal with the exception of the bottom and weighs a little over a pound, but it certainly doesn't feel heavy. And if anything, the weight makes it feel very substantial and less like a toy in comparison to last year's model. Going around the rest of the device, the volume buttons can be found on the left side and they're very tactile, very easy to press. And the same can be said about the power button up top. On the right side is a fan to keep things cool and along the rear is where all the I.O. is located. Finally on the bottom are little rubber feet to keep the projector from sliding around, a standard size tripod mount for mounting the projector on a tripod obviously, and a tiny kickstand if you want to prop the device upwards. The display on top is much larger now at 5 inches and brings 720p resolution to the table which will allow for HD content not only on the screen itself but also the projector. It's bright vivid with good colors and viewing angles. So if you decide to treat it as a miniature tablet of sorts to play games, read emails, browse the web, etc., it'll certainly be good enough for that. It's a little bit odd to talk about specs and performance on a projector, but ZTE did pack some power on the S Pro 2 to handle the more standard parts of the Android experience. Under the hood is a Snapdragon 800, Adreno 330, and two gigs of RAM. Yes, I know this may sound a little bit dated, but again, this is a projector first and foremost, and everything else is secondary. The S Pro 2 comes with the usual Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and LTE connectivity to not only stream content on the go, but also share the device's connection as a Wi-Fi hotspot for up to 10 devices. There's also 16 gigabytes of built-in storage, which isn't a lot for such a media-centric device, but the micro SD card slot supports up to two terabytes of additional storage, which is a ton of space for movies or anything else that you'd like to store. For audio, the internal speaker is located on the bottom and it's it's actually plenty loud with great clarity for a single speaker, but if you want a better audio experience, you can link up your own headphones or speakers via Bluetooth or the headphone jack. The star of the show and the main reason why anyone would buy this device is for the projector. There's also some custom software made specifically for the projector, but first let's start with the projector itself. It's a DLP projector that measures in at 200 lumens in brightness, which is double that of last year's model, and is capable of outputting a 720p image up to 120 inches in screen size. The projector is pretty bright and is still fairly easy to see in a well-lit room, but in order to take advantage of the highest brightness setting, it unfortunately requires being plugged into a power source. The S Pro 2 also features keystoning, and if you're not familiar with that term, essentially what this means is the image will always maintain a rectangular image, even if the projector is not perfectly horizontal. This helps prevent a trapezoid effect that typically happens on projectors that don't have keystoning. You may have noticed that the S Pro 2 does not feature a physical wheel or switch for controlling focus, and that's because the focusing is all controlled through software now. 